All right, so for this one, we're going to be talking about color, and hopefully you watched the short video clip before this um, and saw how it was difficult to see what color the M&Ms were depending on what color light was shining on them. And this concept is really important to me because what I want you to get out of this is that without light, there is no color, okay? Um, or at least we don't see color, the color of things. Okay, and we can kind of talk about color in a couple ways. First of all, there's different colors of light just produced by um, a, a source, okay? And so light sources can produce all sorts of colors, okay? Anything on this visible spectrum of light, okay? We have a higher energy violet all the way down to the lower energy red. Anything that produces light can produce any of these or all of these. Something that produces light is actually producing, or sorry, white light produces all of these together at the same time. And the reason it looks white to us is because the sensors in our eyes are all triggered the same amount, um, which is what our brains interpret to be white light. Okay? And when we assign color to things, or when we see the colors of things, we see those colors because we see the light bouncing off of them. Okay, so for example, if you have a, um, say like a red object, that object is red because red is the color of light that ends up bouncing off of it. So if you were to shine, oops, sorry. If you were to shine all of these colors of light at this at an object that was red what would happen is only these ones would bounce back off and all the rest would get absorbed by the object okay and so this is traditionally why if you're going outside on a hot day you want to wear a white shirt as opposed to a black shirt because the white shirt is going to reflect all of these kinds of visible light whereas the black shirt will absorb all of them okay and so if you're wearing a black shirt on a hot day it's going to be pretty warm because it's absorbing all that energy from the sun that's in the visible spectrum whereas the white shirt's just going to reflect it all so it'll be a little bit cooler okay okay and so here we have what's considered to be the primary color. So you, you probably learned about this um, in probably even as early as kindergarten, that you have these three colors and you can mix them together to produce any other color. And this is true when you're painting with something. And what happens is when you mix these things together, you're basically causing less light to be able to reflect and so that the band of light that can reflect off of it gets smaller and smaller. Okay, and so you're kind of narrowing in on a, a narrower section of that visible spectrum of light. Okay, and and this is kind of true of producing colors of, I mean, this is just kind of like this natural phenomenon related to color. Okay, but we have this other phenomenon that's really interesting that just applies to us as humans. Okay, this right here is considered to be the visible spectrum for light. So you have um, blue, green, and red. And using blue, green, and red and combining these, uh, combining lights of these colors, you can produce any color of light. And you might be thinking, well, why does that matter? Why do we care about producing light, of like color light, aside from maybe like if you're, part of like a show or something. <clears throat> well this is actually really important because um, that's this is what's going on when you're looking at the colors on the screen right now. Okay. The um, any color that you see on a TV screen, on your cell phone screen, on um, any kind of screen or any kind of projected light is a combination of these three colors and just these three colors okay and the reason this works is because your brain can only see these three colors or rather 
it only has sensors to pick up these three colors. Okay, so what happens is when a white light is shined, or when let's say you see something that's yellow, um, there's no yellow sensor in your brain, so this sensor and this sensor get tr triggered, and your brain knows that when you see those two sensors being triggered, then the color of that object is yellow. And so, if you're trying to recreate color on a screen, instead of having to create a bulb or an LED for every single color in the spectrum, it would be much simpler and make a whole lot more sense just to create, put these three colors into it, and use combinations of these three colors. Because the same, if yellow light triggers a combination of red and blue, then if you shine that same combination of red and blue into your eye, it will look like that same color yellow. Okay? And so if you were to look up really, really close, like with a magnifying glass at a computer screen or your cell phone screen, each pixel is made up of these three colors. So you have like a pixel, and you may be divided into like the blue, the red, and the green. And so whenever you see, let's say it's shining yellow, it would be the blue and the red together. Okay, and every time you see light, it's some combination of these three. Okay. And this allows us to, a lot of, I mean, it makes it so that it, it's possible to have things like TVs and cell phones because if you had to put every single color LED into every pixel, it would be impossible. It would take up too much space. It would take up too much energy. And um, we're using kind of this limitation of our eyes to uh, sort of trick our brains into seeing different colors.